Hey guys, this is Kaika again. Um, I'm here with a video to compare Japan with Korea from the perspective of solo traveler. So one of you, Janet Law, you left me this request and I kind of think it's really really interesting and I would really want to talk about it. So yes, what is the difference between the two countries? I feel like this is a really sensitive topic. Um, both countries have their own ardent fans with a very distinctive cultural identity and you know the Japanese will not be known as the Koreans and the Koreans will not be called a Japanese. That, that's how they want it to be and I think um, fans of either countries are usually not into the other countries. Of course I'm generalizing here but um, that's what I usually observe. I am just gonna share my opinion as a traveler. I haven't lived in either of the countries for long periods of time. The longest I've been there was like 2-3 weeks in Japan. So I don't claim to know everything about the countries. I have been a big fan of Japan. I am into an anime, like manga, um, the pop culture for so many years. So I might be a little bit biased, but I'll try to be as objective as I can and just um, share what I observe when I travel there. One of the first difference is language. Both countries have their own national language, Hangu and Japanese. Yes, <laughs> the Japanese speak Japanese. Yeah, the Koreans speak Hangu. Okay, so we know they have their own uh, national language, and everywhere in their country, everything is like customized to their country. But for both countries, when we are talking about the transport or uh, signposts, instructions in the big city Tokyo and Seoul they're both just as tourist friendly and they use a lot of English for their directions personally I have a bigger language barrier when I was in Korea simply because uh, there were English instructions yes and I buying my own tickets from the machine and uh, from the staff was all very easy but there are still many sign poses or like signages that are purely in Hangu. When I was in Japan, I have a lesser language barrier even though lesser English was spoken and written anywhere. Uh, but because I understand Mandarin and a lot of the Japanese kanji is very similar to the, to the Chinese character, I was able to like, kind of make up what it means. So getting around uh, for someone who's bilingual like me uh, is less tedious in Japan. But, now that we're on the topic of transportation, Japan definitely is more complicated than Korea. Uh, especially when we talk about Tokyo and Seoul. I haven't been to a lot of different parts in Korea. I've only been to Seoul and Busan. But even for someone like me who uh, haven't done a lot of research about Korea before I went, I was able to like buy my own KTX tickets and... Um, find my own platforms and blah blah blah. But when I was in uh, when I was in Japan, I definitely felt this overwhelming sense of like despair when I'm taking the train sometimes because the train system is so complicated. It's especially when we are you are at the big stations like um, like the Osaka main station and Shinjuku. Was it Shinjuku or is it Ikebukuro? Anyone who has been to Japan, like please help. Leave me a comment and remind me. Uh, my memory is like not useful anymore. But you know, some of the main big stations in Tokyo, it's like a maze. Like, like even native Japanese or people who work there for a while, they have no idea where to go sometimes. Like corridors, different colors pointing you different directions. It's just very messy. But in Korea, I felt like the travel, especially on the trains, I'm not talking about the bus because the bus predominantly uh, uses Hangu. So for a traveler, it is difficult to travel on the bus without knowing Korean. So anyway, the train system in Korea was like easy peasy, one of the most simplest um, metro station I've used other than like Prague. Just, just really easy to get around, especially when you have an app. One point for Korea, one last point for Japan. Now that we're talking about transport, transport and cost of living in generally in Korea is definitely lower than Japan. Okay, I take back the part about the cost of living because like food and uh, drinks and things like that 
I think they're pretty much on par on both countries. Like a bottle of water costs the same on both countries. Uh, in fact, in some places in Korea, like the tro- tourist attraction spots, the beverages are like two or three times more than the beverage in Japan. Um, I will talk more about that later. Transport is a lot cheaper in Korea. Like I took a KTX, which is a bullet train kind of thing from Busan, which is like you know, at the age of Korea to Seoul, which took two or three hours. I can't remember, but it cost me like less than forty dollars, forty sing dollars. So it's probably like USD thirty plus. But a Shinkansen in Japan, maybe because of the distance, I'm not sure. But a Shinkansen in Japan, like from Tokyo to um, Kyoto, we're talking about like. $198 or something like that. We're talking about three digits. Transport in Japan is definitely higher. But like I say, um, cost of living is almost on par in both countries. But as a tourist uh, who goes to like tourist attractions, but I go to the, all the same stuff, you know, like Osaka Kasa, Asakusa, uh, places like that. And I, of course, buy my snacks at these places, I definitely feel like Japan is more affordable than Korea, which is kind of ironic because um, cost of living generally, like let's talk about general, the GDP of the country and all that stuff, um, Japan is more expensive, but I think like tourist attractions in Korea is more expensive. The roadside stores in Busan and, and in Seoul Especially in Busan, I, I'm not sure why. They cost like 1,000 won and above, which is like a 120 Singapore dollars. And sometimes like a bottle of barley water will cost me 3,000 won, which is like 360 or 2,000 won, like 240. But in Japan, I like to think that the cost of commodities like coffee, uh, mineral water and all sorts of stuff, it is very generalized. Like every state I go to pretty much cost the same. Maybe at some places like Kanazawa I felt was a little pricey and Tokyo was a little bit pricey uh, but Kansai which is like Kyoto and Osaka this is actually pretty cheap and yeah even at the tourist places they don't hike up the price which is something I really really respect because I've been to so many places in different countries like China will sell you a bottle of water for 10 renminbi when it's usually sold for 4 bucks. So you can pretty much um, expect to pay us the same amount of price everywhere you go. Of course, there might be exceptions. Um, maybe you're going to a really, really rural mountainous area where you, they take extra ex- effort to bring that bottle there. So, so that, of course, it has to cost more. But, you know, that's what I observed. But since we're on the topic of food, I feel that food in Japan could be cheaper than Korea. Okay, this is highly opinionative. I hope I don't come across as being too like biased, but I feel the food I ate in Japan was more delicious than the food in Korea. Okay, okay, okay. Please, haters, don't hate on me first. It's not because the Korean food is not good. It's just that I didn't go into the right restaurants, which is the problem here that I want to highlight. As a traveler, I don't really research on like where is the place to eat. I kind of just let uh, my journey take me anywhere that happened to be along the way and I'm hungry and it looks good, I go in. And I think that's what pretty, pretty much most people do. And... In a way, that's the best way to see how the standard of the food in the place is. Ugh, I'm so I'm so afraid of saying this. I feel like I'm gonna offend so much people. I'm sorry. This is just my opinion, and the fact that I was probably a little unlucky. Like the food I ate was like, nah. It was like okay. I really like the side dishes that they dish out in Korea. Like you order one bowl of something, and they give you like ten side dishes, and they're all pretty yummy. Um, but yeah, I feel like the food taste in Japan is very consistent. Like, nothing sucks. None of the food will make you go, hmm, 
like you know the Japanese fast food they all taste pretty inconsistent they are very affordable and they pr- they, they taste like distinctively Japanese um, which is a good thing but I, I feel like there is more times in Korea than in Japan where I've had food that I felt was hmm it's okay like it was not it was nothing to rave about so that's one thing for the cost of the food I think they are pretty much on par to a certain extent if we are talking about going into like a cafe a fast food restaurants a family restaurant or whatsoever where you want to have food I feel like Japan has more options it's more affordable which is kind of strange considering the fact that it's a more expensive country overall but in terms of food they have a lot of varieties and different price tags and one thing very important is Japan's the whole culture the way things are being sold you know the menu in the restaurant is designed it caters to solo travelers like yeah I think like the Japanese have many lonely people or people who is just working alone in Tokyo in the city they sell things individually but you know in Korea I really wanted to eat fried chicken I really wanted to eat fried chicken and beer but I couldn't find a restaurant that do it for one person because they always sell it in like half a kg or one kg which like how am I gonna finish one kg of fried chicken so I couldn't I actually didn't manage to um do that and then when I was in the restaurant I always kind of flip through the menu and I I, I recognize that a lot of the, like the stews and stuff they are all catered for groups like for family so it's not really for one solo traveler of course there are also cuisines in japan that's like you know sukiyaki um or barbecues that is minimally for two i just generally feel like japan is more catered to solo travelers mcdonald's in japan they have like a table for one person facing the wall which is kind of sad like this is the wall and then you know your table is here and then you just eat your lunch against the wall which is kind of sad but you know if i'm traveling alone or i'm eating alone i probably don't want to see other people like have having a really fun time or maybe i do okay i do i'm not that like mean but you know i would probably appreciate the fact that i can just enjoy my meal by myself so that's yes that's one thing tourist attraction except for like the theme parks like the Disneyland or USS Universal Studio and the Lotte World um, outside of this like theme parks they are all generally pretty affordable in both Japan and Korea to a certain extent Japan might be more affordable because like the temples that I go to in Kyoto most of them don't cost more than 500 yen yeah i think they're pretty much on par they're pretty much on par unlike in china where every single attraction that you go to you have to pay and sometimes the lesser known places are exorbitantly priced and uh the entrance ticket to juzaigo which is a very beautiful um national reserve park uh really really beautiful it's like a nickname the fairy tale heaven on earth or something like that that costs as much as like an entrance ticket to Disneyland. Japan and Korea, pretty much the same in this aspect. I kind of just sat down uh, because I had a little bit of time today to film this so I don't have a script of what to say and so I'm like just stopping and pausing here and there to just think about what I want to say. And it's like horrible today, like the, the weather is savage. Singapore is so hot, so humid, it's crazy. Anyone, any Singaporeans who's watching this now, like, Whoa, raise your hand, let me know, how are you melting? I am someone who just likes taking pictures very much and that's one of the main things I do when I travel. I feel like somehow Japan is small. The architecture in Japan, the attractions, I don't know, they just look a little bit more photogenic in Japan I might be a little bit biased I am not sure but it's just really strange like every corner you walk in Japan even if it's like the back street you still evoke this uniquely Japanese vibe it's kind of strange I don't know why I have no idea why it happens maybe it's the signboards or, or whatever 
but just the way things are designed everywhere in every corner you just feel like it's distinctively japanese i wasn't able to like oh why is what hair doing this why is it going on like this it's really ugly I didn't actually manage to like talk to a lot of Koreans, uh, lang- ag- again the language barrier because I haven't spent so much time in Korea compared to Japan. I've only been to Korea twice and I had more heartwarming stories in Japan than in Korea. Again, this is highly personal. Um, it really depends on where you go to, who you talk to and, uh, and stuff like that. Despite the fact that Japanese are generally more reserved. But when I was in Japan, I had a lot of um, obasa, which is like middle-aged ladies, talk to me. uh, And like I've even had one of them treat me like drinks for no reason at all. Just because we had a... We just like shared a moment, I guess that's how you would describe it. But I hadn't, I haven't had that kind of experiences in Korea. Yeah, when I was in Shirakawa, my Japanese hostel owner was really sweet. Uh, she couldn't speak English, and I couldn't really speak Japanese. I mean, I do have a pretty big uh, vocabulary of Japanese because I've been watching anime for ten over years. But I can't really string my sentences together. But basically, I can't really speak Japanese. But and she can't really speak English. But she took the effort to talk to me two, three hours just to get to know me well. Of course, I'm sure she's not the typical Japanese. She's really, you know, a gem. She's really polite and nice. And but yeah, I don't, I don't know. Like I just have so many beautiful memories with Japanese people being very passionate and polite and kind and all the people that I meet along the way when I ask for directions when I ask for help they, they especially the service staff they go over and beyond it makes you feel so at ease you know as a, as, as a traveler it makes you feel so relaxed like you have you never have to worry about anything going wrong it's just this one way to look at it. I'm not saying the Koreans are not nice. I'm just saying I hadn't had the chance to experience, you know, the experiences that I've mentioned beforehand. Even though I do observe that Koreans are more outgoing, they are more passionate, and to all the like tourist attractions, places that I've been to, I always see a lot of ajumas and ajusi, which is um, middle aged uncles and aunties they were karaoke at the karaoke booth and then they would dance together in the like public squares you know they are like you can really tell that they really love life they they really enjoy being in the presence of each other and oh speaking of presence of each other the the personal space in japan uh, and in korea is very different like in japan people always have a distance between each other like like in Singapore, we don't like to have any form of physical contact. It's considered rude. Even if you're on the train, you try to not touch the person beha- behind you, beside you. You don't. You just don't. We don't like it. But in Korea, I noticed that skinship, I think that's what they call it, like physical contact is no big deal to them. Um, it's nothing at all if they pushed you when you're on the train. Like, it's just... I think they, and and Koreans I think are more expressive than Japanese because the Japanese culture are very uh, reserved and polite they keep to themselves so sometimes even if they don't like something they wouldn't tell you straight in your face oh one thing I really like in Japan that I didn't notice in Korea is the abundance of convenience stores convenience store culture in Japan is like a national fandom it's literally everywhere like even in the most rural of mountain villages, you would see konbini. And in places like Tokyo, you pretty much see six convenience stores down one road. Which is like kind of excessive, but you know, the convenience store is like a heaven in Japan. So I'm not complaining. You can buy like literally anything there. And they have awesome like canned milk tea and canned coffee and onigiris and bentos at really affordable prices at competitive prices and you can get everything there and for someone like me like a tr- solo traveler who is always on the go a lot i don't stop at restaurants for lunch and um, breakfast very often because i usually sleep in too late to 
have like any sensible form of breakfast. So I kind of just run to the nearest convenience store, grab an onigiri or bento or whatever, and I'll just eat along the way. But I found that to be very difficult in Korea because the convenience store don't seem to have such a variety of products. That um, The convenience store is... A place for you to buy things that you need to buy in the last minute but it's not really catered for like people who who's on his way to work and wants a quick munch you know i think it's a totally different convenience store culture but i personally prefer the japanese one because that's my preferred choice oh and one thing the convenience stores in japan is like affordably priced I, like i've mentioned unlike the rest of the world <laughs> like in singapore convenience stores are like twice as much more expensive than anywhere else so i never buy stuff in the convenience store unless i really have to and in korea i think it's the same case i don't feel like the drinks were particularly cheap or particularly expensive no wait i'd like I'd like like it's the same in korea i don't feel like it was very affordable it was okay it was not like super expensive but it wasn't like enticing me to spend my money inside but in japan you walk into a convenience store and you are like oh, can i buy this oh this looks so tasty and it's what 150 yen bar let's eat this cake oh let's eat that bento this bento is like 900 yen oh looks nice that's sushi <laughs> take it you know in japan the whole consumerism culture is really strong they just do everything to make you spend money and you just feel so happy spending money because everything is so beautifully wrapped up and yeah like you really enjoy your time in japan not that i didn't enjoy my time in korea i did but just when i'm talking about the convenience stores there's this difference but fashion items in korea is a lot cheaper than in japan i think i've never really bought any clothes in japan because they are so expensive other than during the fukubukuro season which is in december where they have the lucky box uh if you're not sure what lucky box or lucky bag is i have a video where i, I share what some of my shopping loops um so yes and so they are like discount items but in korea i can buy like a jacket for five dollars like maybe four us dollars you know it's, it's that cheap if you find cheap stuff it can go really cheap and i, I find a store that was selling things for like two thousand won which is like two us dollars for everything you know so in that expect I think Korea is a better fashion shopping paradise. They both have their own range of skincare items. Like when I was in Japan, I would definitely buy like a face mask. I would buy my Hada Labo facial toner and moisturizers. And the same thing in Korea, I would buy, you know, lots of different brands that I really like. And so I'm using some of them now and I really like them. Uh, so in that aspect, I think they are pretty much the same. To a certain extent, I think Korea is cheaper for their skincare items. But for makeup, I think Japan has more variety. And the drugstore makers are very affordable and very good quality. So in this aspect, they are pretty much the same. But I feel that for skincare, Korea probably have more options because there's many, many different brands like Skin Food, Ethyl House, Innisfree, Natural Republic, blah, blah, blah. Yeah, I think like the Japanese drugstore brand, there isn't as much, I think. Um, I think that's pretty much about it. I hope i haven't offended anyone with my opinions please bear in mind that these are just my opinion everyone will have a different experiences uh you travel for different reasons uh and of course because i am an anime and manga cosplay fan so you know the japanese world kind of means a different thing for me so when i go to japan you know just seeing anything is interesting because it reminds me of the manga i've been reading for so long so i hope you guys enjoyed this video uh, give me a thumbs up if you liked it and if you like more talking vlogs like this uh, let me know i'm not very good at talking but yeah but yeah okay oh there's one more thing i really love about japan and that's their vending machines <laughs> it's like a godsend the vending machines are always very reasonably reasonably priced and they have warm canned drinks in the vending machine which is super awesome during cold months because it becomes your instant hand warmer and i can't live without it because it's just so awesome like you're walking down a, a, a park 
full of like beautiful cherry blossoms or autumn leaves and then you start to feel really cold because the wind was blowing and then you see a vending machine and then you're like ah i'll have some warm coffee or some awesome milk tea the milk tea in japan is awesome like none of them taste bad you definitely try the milk tea when you're in japan so anyhow you buy 100 yen of milk tea take a hot can hold it in your hand you warm your fingers up until it turns go and then you drink it but you know i just love it i just love it that's a personal favorite so okay i think i've uh digressed too much i hope you guys enjoyed this video leave me a comment let me know what you think bye